Morning, comrades. Shouldn't, shouldn't uh, we sing that great hymn?
Please be seated. Shouldn't we really bring these two comrades in front here? Bring some chairs. Come with this, come round here. Come with Treasurer Jen. Comrades and General of the African National Congress, comrades of, um, in the struggle from South Africa, my colleagues and I, in the leadership of the parents government in Zambia, take this opportunity to welcome you to Zambia. This is obviously an important get together because as things stand now in South Africa, we in Zambia believe that these consultations between the African National Congress and various patriotic organizations within South Africa is of paramount importance. Any oppressor any exploiter survives on divide and rule policy. If one who is arbitrarily in power can manage to divide the people he is exploiting, he certainly will not stop at anything to keep them divided. Your power, therefore, your strength, therefore, depends on this unity for which the African National Congress we know has always stood, for which your own organization we know has always stood. So you do us great honor by coming to Zambia to consult with the leadership of the African National Congress. Your country is going through a very, very difficult time. I said to Mr. De Clark when I met him in Livingston, one of our towns, that I believed he was a sincere man. I believed he was an honest man. But I did not know whether he was going to assess, analyze the problems of appetite as the black man sees them and feels them. I did not know whether he was going to analyze the problems of appetite as the colored man sees them. I did not know whether he was going to be able to analyze the problems of appetite as this would he be able to prescribe the right prescription for medicine that remains to be done I did say also so indeed he has allowed mass rallies he has released some of our comrades from detention He has said a number of institutions were now open to all races. A most welcome thing. But we know that doesn't solve the problem. Uh, Secretary General of the party, Prime Minister, Head of the uh, 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 Government Administration, Secretary of State for Defense and Security, and my name is Kenneth Kaunda, President of the Party. 
<laughs> we bring you together here, comrades, only to have a meal together very quickly, so that as you go back to your country, do know Zambians support your cause because it is a just cause. And looking at the audience here, our audience here, just as we know of the African National Congress, it is truly multiracial or non-racial. We welcome this very much indeed. Because man is not important because of his color. Man is important because in our view, he is made in the image of God, and no one has the right to defy that. So, comrades, welcome to Zambia. I hope you have been feeling at home because this is your other home. Thank you very much indeed. Well, President, uh, thank you very much for the kind words of welcome to our comrades and fellow countrymen who have been with us here for the past uh, few hours and uh, many of which we spent trying to tackle the problems mm -hmm. in our country. Now, uh, we've started rather late, Comrade President, and uh, we're not going to make a lengthy statement, but one of the comrades who's here with us here um, is Comrade Harry Guala, the senior leader of our people. He was just been recently released uh, from imprisonment. Uh, in fact, uh, when they released him just now, he was already doing a second stint in prison. He had been there before, released, and uh, of course, he, after release, he, he, he undertook his so-called terrorist activities again, and he went back. And uh, <laughs> when, he, uh, when he got there this time, unfortunately, he was struck by um, some illness, which we've been trying, trying to grapple with, uh, which has affected uh, the use of his arms. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was um, felt that um, uh, Comrade Terry Guala, uh, uh, should take the opportunity on behalf of our comrades from home uh, and of course all of us uh, to say a few words uh, of appreciation for this opportunity uh, to, to the president. Uh, the people that are here, comrade president, are those who had, who had received, our leaders who had recently received, uh, released, uh, who had organized that historic rally mm. And of course, uh, in their own right, um, leaders of the various sectors of our democratic movement, uh, Democratic Trade Union, United Democratic Front, the youth. I noticed that uh, the, the, the youth leaders just come in. Uh, maybe he overslept. <laughs> and uh, he must be criticized very badly for that. Uh, but we've got all these sectors uh, that are here of our people. Uh, who had come to share with us uh, certain ideas uh, and of course um, trying to find out how do we make our way through this maze uh, as we move forward. Uh, if you, with your kind permission, Mr. President, we shall ask Comrade Terry Guala to say to us. Comrade President, members of the Central Committee, I feel very humbled to express our gratitude to you as President of Zambia and Chairman of the Frontline States. Our struggle in South Africa has made you pay a very high price. Your security is always violated. Your e economy 
is heavily taxed. But despite all that, you have not decided to drive us out of your country. We do not consider you, Comrade President, and the Zambian people as our friends. But we take you as one of us in the struggle that continues in the continent of Africa, the struggle against colonialism and oppression. Despite these heavy odds against you, we have stood steadfastly on the side of the people of South Africa. As our acting president and general secretary has said, the people who have come over to your country represent the heart and the soul of the struggle back home. They are the pulse, they are the heartbeat of that struggle there. Many of our people have perished in the cause of the struggle. In detention, on the battlefield, in the townships, and in prison. But they have nothing to regret. We chose in 1961 to die on our feet than to live a perpetual life of slavery, living on our knees. This meant that we had to transform our struggle from petitions, supplications, and prayers to the rulers of South Africa into a determined action by the people. Our action back home is taking many forms. And one of those forms is the armed struggle. Now in think Thank you. 
back it is preserving the form the form of acceptability because he's another man while you were standing outside here Kumit Mahodi was saying he is the leopard it doesn't change its course and that is true the clerk is the same man with the leader who was the leader of the nationalist party in the transfer who had occupied a position of hardness for granted against any form of relaxation on the party can it suddenly change I do not think miracles have been twice if so who suddenly became Paul was struck by lightning and he went blind the clock has gone blind on the peripheral reforms and the intensification of the Congress they are challenging the African National Congress the born this morning organizations like INCAD are claiming a right of parity with the African National Congress other organizations we shot up the National Congress but it is not the African National Congress that has got to decide that I'm the leader of the people of South Africa it is the people of South Africa themselves who know